<laughs> Morning, John. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, well, how are you, mate? Yeah, good. Thank you. Good. It's our um, first tech chat together. It certainly so, uh, is. First of many. Yes, yes, I will. So I'm looking forward to it because um, I wanted to um, go into a bit more detail. Go maybe go over to the dark side, learn a bit more about impositioning. Um, so I know you're the uh, you're the man that can um, give me all the knowledge. Yeah. Are you sure you want to come in, Will? The water's well, choppy in the world of impositioning. <laughs> I hear it can be warm. <laughs> <laughs> so I basically I have been working in impositioning in my workflow role for about the, the last 19 years. And impositioning has always been the holy grail. And by impositioning, I mean fully automatic impositioning. And um, so we've always considered JDF presetting with impositioning to be something that we would do with sort of presetting. So in other words, you'd get a really good rough approximation of what it is you're trying to achieve in your laydown. And um, you then, with the pre-press operator, could then go in and then start editing those things. But we had a few challenges that we had to overcome and we've now got a sort of suite of products and modules and scripts and bits and bobs that we can put in place now that can actually change that from being a presetting workflow to actually being full automatic in positioning and we actually have a number of customers now that for bound work in particular they've now created layout profiles for everything so the main tool that we're using the main improvement really is the layout library so if you imagine a historical workflow, if you wanted to automate the workflow, you would have to basically make a, a template normally in the pre-press workflow or the digital workflow. And all you do is you reference it on the way through and then the color bar and the positioning and everything is set exactly as it's right. The light library still uses um, still uses um, templates, but these templates are have variables within them. So you could instead of setting up a template for, you know, A4 and SRA1 and then basically you're done. But that would only work on that page size and on that sheet size. What this will do is it will say, yeah, it's an SRA one, but the page size could be 210 millimeters wide or five and a half inches, depending on what side of the Atlantic you're on, or 297 uh, um, or eight and a half. And, but what we can do in the light library is we, we can start at eight and a half and then take it down to, to seven and have the same behavior and the same gaps uh, dealing with it and working with it. So. So issue number one is that you don't end up with a ton of profiles that nobody knows about or a load of templates that nobody knows about. You can cut down the range. I mean, you're still looking quite a few, you're probably still looking probably 70 or 80 profiles, but those 70 or 80 profiles should do you for the whole product range, depending on the size of your device and so on and so forth. The second challenge that we have is that what a lot of people do is they require another variable in there, and that's normally the face trim. So if you imagine if I put a static face trim in, let's say I put six million, then what you're actually doing is you're creating a lay down that needs to be trimmed before it's folded. OK, otherwise the overfold doesn't work and so on and so forth. So another fantastic feature within the layout library is the auto trim. So what this does is it takes the face trim value, it takes the overfold and the overfold direction into account. And then basically whatever's left on that sheet of paper is what it sets the face trim to, which means then you can end up with 16s, 8s, 4s and so on and so forth. Jobs um, uh, creating uh, lots of different laydowns, you know, lots of lots of lots of um, lots of laydowns and lots of results that don't need to be edited or changed or trimmed before they get uh, folded. And then finally, and it was a big challenge, was that we had an issue with uh, color bar locations. So some pre-pressed products have got auto locating color bars. So Pronect has got a very good one. Basically it looks, starts in its starting position. If there's not a gap there for a color bar, it wanders up the sheet or down the sheet, whatever your preference is, looking for a hole that's big enough. And then when it finds one, it just shoves it in. So that's great. That really helps you out. Agfa's and has got a pretty good function where you can create templates. So when something's this sheet size and something this page size or between these page sizes that it picks a particular mark and a template, not quite as sophisticated as the Pronect ones, but still pretty good. And then other workflows just don't, don't embrace those things at all. So what we've done is that in our layout library, we are able to, to put a tag or a name specifically uh, within the name of that profile that identifies whether the color bar is at the grip in the middle or at the back edge. And then when we deliver the JDF in to the workflow using whatever mechanism works best, we either pick the donor template or pick the appropriate marks um, set 
using this private tag, this either front, middle or back or wherever you've got it set. So we now have about seven, eight, nine customers out there now that are basically for all of their bound work using these three tools, okay, are automating um, their laydowns. Could I just check, would the material have an impact on the lay down? It would, good question. Well, it's not like I asked you to write it down earlier on or anything. Yeah, it's a good so yeah, so so yeah, substrate has, can have an enormous impact. So clearly within the layout library, we have um, layouts that can be selected based on the micron of the material. So the material within the database, you can then pick it. So let's say you get up to a certain weight of material, 16 pages are now no longer appropriate, then it'll switch them automatically to eight and work them out that way. So that's pretty good. Um, it also has the ability to look at whether a material is coated or uncoated. So I've got two customers that I know of that actually have different laydowns based on the different types of material and have a special laydown for uncoated stock due to issues with cracking based on the, the finishing equipment that they've got. So yeah, substrate material can make an enormous difference to the laydown and it is considered in the layout library. Perfect, thank you. Well, that was really informative. Um, thank you for your time. And if everyone's got any questions, feel free to get in contact with us. Have a good day.